Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel, my name's Mike. This is our 12 by 24 barn that we were building. Chickens on this side, you can hear them in the background, they're excited. That's a dog. That side will be for the goats, a couple stalls. We've been slowly working our way through this project, trying to get it wrapped up. What we're gonna try to get done in today's video is a door here. Try to get everything painted on the outside. You can see we got a little bit going on there. Oh yeah, and a few people had some good suggestions on ways, don't take this personal, to uh, improve this latch mechanism. So maybe we'll try to tackle some of that too. Go ahead and pack some of this down there. I'm a little concerned that we have enough lumber for both doors. I think we're probably gonna have to end up ordering some more, but that'll be okay. This will be the best way to I guess we'll set this inside for now. So I got a bunch down here leaned up so I can kind of see what I've got. Everything I have left is pretty thin, or narrow that way. That's uh, five inches. See if I can find four of them that are pretty similar in width because I don't really feel like ripping anything down. Four and a half. And then we can use those for the edges. Let's see, this is four and a half. Four. Four. It's pretty close. Ooh, what we got here? What's this? Okay. We'll take this one. And that one. Those are the same. Those are the same. They're within a quarter. We'll use that for the border. See if we can come up with a good way to screw this from the inside that whenever we're all said and done, we don't bury the screws and end up having to do everything again. If you guys have been to the channel a while, you know we're not too crazy about the whole measurement thing. We just kind of do this. Perfect. And then we cut it. It works really well for us, for the most part. Where's my other one? Right Though. Should we do that? I don't know. Good question. I've got these four inch long screws. I think that'll work. We'll just run a few. Oh dear. Through the back side, like so. Like so, button. Oh dear. I guess I can just look. Nope, this is definitely better. Okay, there we go. It does, by the way, it's, it's, it's got a clip on it, let's do that. Now it's gonna be a lot of off cut on these, and that's okay because inside the barn, remember there's a half wall, it's about three feet tall. And if we're lucky, these off cuts will be about the size we need for that. So it should work out okay. Beautiful.
I'll see how this fits. I just eyeball everything. Sure do. We'll run those screws along through the other side. And I chalk a line. So that one came through right there. And that one came through right there. So it is about two weeks later. You can see the buds starting to come on the trees. It's looking absolutely gorgeous out today. It's mid 70s, it's perfect painting weather. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Before we start painting, I gotta get this detail finished real quick. And we're gonna finish that detail up there real quick. So next we gotta rip a piece to go right here. See how I had to notch out around that hinge? We'll have to do the same thing on this piece. But before we do that, I need to cut here over on that side and we need to run a board across so we can fill that gable in. Got some of these left over from another project still, so we're gonna go ahead and use those. That way, they'll go through that board, through that board, and uh, into that fellow there. Same thing on that side, it's just behind the siding. Probably unnecessary, but since I got them, let's use them. A little bit of an angle on it. That'll do, bud. So this is the off fall from that door. We'll start taking that and use it up to fill that section in. Without doing a whole lot of math, I would say the best way to do that, let's just hold one up, plumb it off this siding, assuming my siding's plumb. Trace the line on the back side. <laughs> what happened? Okay. All right, let's, let's do a little bit better job on the trace there, bud. That's a better line. Well, then we'll cut that, hold it up where it needs to be, and then we can mark our length.
that's what that ended up looking like, and that'll be fun. Keep in mind, there's still a piece that goes around the edge, like a border all the way around the door. Closes in this gap all the way around. I was just gonna do that and then fill this inside on the actual door part, but if a fella just holds it over a little, closes that gap good enough. I don't know too many critters are gonna get in that gap. That may be okay. And we should, we'll see when we get it all put together. I clipped this corner earlier to try to give us, uh, make sure we were able to get a full 90 once we get that on. And we might just have to clip that corner a little bit more, but that should be fine. We'll figure it out in a little bit. It's looking really good though. It's looking really good though. We're gonna pull those boards off that door and we're gonna go ahead I bought two more gallons of primer. I only planned on using one and just kind of brushing over the worst spots for stuff so it doesn't stain through that white paint we put on. But the primer really wasn't that much. And seeing as we have half of it Picassoed anyway, we might as well Rembrandt the rest of it. I don't know what any of that means, but we're gonna roll primer on it. Gosh dang. By the way, an awesome subscriber named Seth sent me this sweet DeWalt packout box that I've been using for my drill stuff. Got the impact, the uh, regular drill, the hammer drill, which was also sent to me by a subscriber, with some batteries that was sent to me by a subscriber, all in that box, so I'm not losing stuff as much and it's speeding things up. I know, a uh, a sprayer would be a lot faster, and I do hope to get one one day, especially when we get to the YouTube yacht. That's a lot of painting, but this is what I have. Run what you brung. Also, I just mixed that with a stick, you know, so set your expectations accordingly. Primer is done. Looks good too. That means that all the spots we originally worried about have two coats of primer on them now. And then the rest of the boards that we weren't worried about, the other spots have at least one coat on them. So that's gonna work great. I'm gonna let that dry the rest of the afternoon. I gotta mow grass this afternoon anyway. And I'm on shift tomorrow. And the next time I come off shift, the weather's supposed to be pretty nice too. Let's see if we can't get a coat of white paint on there and start putting some of the black trim pieces on too. A couple days later, weather's beautiful. Let's paint. So this is the paint we're using. It is barn paint. Seems appropriate. And it's white, like we talked about. A lot of people made the comment that you can even see in the picture there, they made barns red because red barns, the paint didn't attract bugs and that's probably true. There's sure, I'm sure there's some science to that. Uh, we painted white for a very specific reason and that reason is we wanted to. That seems good enough for us. White paint will attract bugs, no doubt about that. Uh, you'll also notice mildew and things like that. We'll just have to keep her clean. And you know, the chickens eat bugs, so that should work out okay, I think. She's a little out of balance, but she'll work.
for you guys that do have sprayers and use sprayers. Now I don't want to go out and buy like a $500 Graco or something like that, but for a little homeowner sprayer that a fellow might use from time to time, what you guys have, and if you've had good luck with them, and if you'd recommend them, I'm kind of curious. Because like I said, we do plan on getting one. Ugh. That was, there you go, bud. Well, that's gonna set some people off. By the way, how you feeling about the Crocs? That's what we're wearing today. Coat number one is done. I think it looks awesome. I don't care what anybody says. We love the way this thing is looking. Two coats total. Second coat will probably have to be tomorrow morning. I want to let that dry as much as possible. Next step, go ahead and start ripping the pieces of wood. That will be the little border trim pieces around the corners where the soffit goes at the bottom. So I've got what's left up here of that two common poplar. I do have a little bit left over here, but these were the ones that had pretty much the biggest knot sections. Uh, we'll end up doing all cutting those knots out and taking those pieces, smaller, shorter pieces, down to the basement and save for woodworking projects. But we're not going to use those for the trim pieces. They're not really worth ripping down. So we're going to rip down what we have and go ahead and get some painted so we can get a general idea what this is all going to look like. Now most of your saws come with a uh, little rip fence you can put on here. But I would say like majority of skill saw owners, I'd lost that pretty quick. And then I just, uh, I had some holes drilled in here from a previous project and I just screwed on a board to use as a rip fence. That's going to work just fine for what we're doing. Not too worried about it. If you're wondering where the table saw is, it is next to my paint sprayer. Here's what we ended up with. Those should work fine. We'll pick the better of the two sides and make that the side we paint. I'm gonna take this old plane real quick. We're not doing anything fancy. This isn't a craftsman channel. We're just gonna kind of knock down that sharp edge real fast with the plane. Then we're gonna take this. We're not really sanding. We're just gonna try to get all the dust and little, little things like that. Just get them pulled off. That's all we're doing, just clean them up. Just, you know, the minimum amount necessary. So this is the uh, same paint we used on the barn. 
bar and the siding paint, except it's, it's black. My roller's not rolling very well. There it goes. We're not worried about primer on this because I can't imagine it bleeding through the black paint too much. Or if it does, I don't think it'll be too terribly noticeable. We also have uh, the brace pieces that went around that door we've got to paint too. I need to clean them up with that little pad. You can see how much it, uh, I already got a little paint on my fingers, but you can see how much it soaked in that first coat. So we're gonna go ahead and put a second coat on these boards so that can dry. I would love to get a second coat on today, but I think it's gonna be in the morning. Let's... Now we're still. Still a little tacky yet. So the next thing I want to do, I want to try to fix this latch a little bit. The biggest thing that I didn't think of is when you're inside, it's kind of difficult to get out. Now you can, you give her a little twist, but I want to make that easier. So we're going to take this nut off here and I'm going to chisel just enough out that I can pull it out this way. Now obviously when I installed it, I just slid it back that way and then put the nut on, but I want to weld a piece of metal out and a little bar over so you can operate it from the inside, which means to reinstall it, we're gonna have to come in from this way because obviously you won't be able to slide it through that. This, that's solid, that's a, that's a solid thing. Set those up here. Oh, but I can't really take that, well, the bolt, yeah, I just need to tap the bolt out. You know, I can pretty much get it out that way, the way it is. I don't think I have to do any chiseling. Okay. All right, let's take this over to the barn and see if we can't fab up a little handle extension on it real fast. Well, I guess we might as well take these off and do that handle right while we're here. So we're over here at my little uh, fab shop. No, pile of junk. Yeah, that's what it is. We're over here at my little pile of junk and see if we can't find something that's gonna be simple and easy to do. We don't need anything fancy. I'm thinking, what do we got here? What's this? That's hollow. I don't wanna mess with that. I like something a little sturdier. Something real solid that the kids can just, you know, they're gonna be hanging from the dang thing. You know they are. Doesn't matter how many times you tell them they're gonna do it. So I do have this piece of all thread. Stay with me though, I, I know what you're thinking, that doesn't look very comfortable either, but if we, if we weld her there and we heat and bend it, and what if I said I got a trick up my sleeve that'll make that, uh, make that somewhat comfortable to use? Do you believe me? I couldn't find my regular welding gloves. I forgot uh, a possum got hung up in the net at the chicken coop the other day and Chelsea came over to get my welding gloves so she could get the possum out of the net. By the time she made it back, the, he'd freed himself. But I forgot to bring my gloves back over. But these will work for what we're doing. We're not doing a lot here. I think that'll work for no more than what we're trying to do. Got her cleaned up a little bit, use my ground clamp as my clamp. I did go get my welding gloves from the house for this part. But, uh, see if we can't make that work real fast.
This is what we ended up with. I just kind of want to make sure it's gonna. We should be able to slide that through there. Oh yeah. Okay. We're gonna paint this, and we're gonna plasti dip this. I don't know if you guys ever use that, but it works pretty well. We got painted up. I've been using on the barn on all this stuff. I like to use this Rust-Oleum Farm implement. It just it always does good for me as far as taking a beating. But this is what we've got. We'll let that dry a little bit. I'll spray another coat. While that handle's drying, this is ready for another coat. Heck, let's do it. Let's go ahead and put the third coat on today and we'll be done with it. Then that'll dry overnight and it'll be ready for install in the morning. Go ahead and put a third coat on this board. Go ahead and give this another little coat. White paint, looking good, looking real good. It's not tacky anymore. But we'll go ahead and leave the second coat for the morning. A couple days later, weather's beautiful. Let's paint. Second coat is on all the way around. Looks really nice. While we're waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna come over here to the pole barn. We've got the 755 tore down. I'm adding some auxiliary hydraulics on the tractor. Just a little bit of a spoiler alert for what's coming up on the channel. And then we'll get back and start putting that black trim up. So I've got a few boards pre-cut. The door pieces there, you see here. We've got a line chalked right here. For that top piece. Let's get everything on here. So I'm just using some shorter screws here. They're still T25, Torx head, but uh, they're a little shorter. Got a screw down there to hold that for us. Downfall of putting the blue line on top is I can't see it. Ow, what bit me? What was it? Did you guys see it? Got a corner piece. Goes like that. Not using the same holes. I don't know how I feel about that, but I think it'll be okay in the long run. I might fill those with something. So this is what we're looking like. Pretty happy with it before we finish those over. We gotta put the pieces around the outside of the door on next. So that does not look great. Uh, let's take two. Let's take two on that one. So I got that piece on there to where we can get it open. 
We only made this door to open 90 degrees, which is what we're getting. I've got a plan to get just a touch more out of it. A few people mentioned it on the last one. Get a piece of conveyor belt or old fire hose and run that gap closed with some belt. I think it would look really fine and would uh, close that gap up. But I miter this with a skill saw in place. I think I take another skill saw I have, it's a little bit bigger, and 45 that, or even just 22 and a half from that back edge out to here. Just kind of clip it a little bit. Because right now, 90 hits on 90. 90 hits on 90. If I clip this, that'll give me just a touch over 90. And that's, that's plenty good for what we want. That'll be fine. This whole area here is going to end up being gravel where we can pull a truck or side by side down with food or straw, whatever we have. And so as long as we can open it 90. And then we'll put a, a, a loop and hook style latch that goes from here to here and it'll lock in. And that'll lock the door in place so the wind can't catch it. We got a couple more pieces to put on in that handle, but I'm running out of time. We have got to, we got to, I got to quit talking to you guys and start getting work done. Over here, 45 and trim like it's crown molding or something. All right, let's see if we can get this handle installed real quick. And this latch. I'm not gonna have enough time to finish this part either. Man, this is so hectic of a video ending, but I just have so much going on today. I'm sitting here, sitting here debating if I should even put this video out. I feel like I'm leaving a lot unfinished on the barn. To make a video out of it, I don't know. But this is the kind of life too. You never get everything done in the day you want to get done. I don't know. So this is where I have to leave you. Unfortunately, I was, I was really hoping to get more done, get some more trim on that, but I'm actually out of lumber. I've used everything up. Still got one more little piece to put on there, but I gotta go get the kids from school, so we're gonna get through this pretty quick. Here's what it's all gonna look like. There will be a piece of that black trim that goes on the bottom. Remember, there's gonna be some galvanized wire that comes up, screws to this, and goes out a couple feet, and then gets buried to keep the critters from digging underneath. So we get that wire up, and we'll cover it with a piece of that trim. It'll be a little bit taller than what that is. That'll go all the way around. The soffit will actually sit on top of this and then nail to the bottom of that. That's the plan for that. Of course, it'll get a wrap around the corner, another piece like that to finish the corner off and on around the sides. I think it's gonna look really sharp. I think the black and white looks really good. I really like it. I am gonna track down either some fire hose or some conveyor belt and after we clip this corner so it opens just a touch over 90 we'll put that fire hose or conveyor belt on there it'll still look really good because it's black in color and then it'll close that gap for us it'll cover the hinges too I think it'll be a really sharp look really sharp look still have to get the handle back on here's what we have here now I just plasti dipped that end nothing fancy but it's super comfortable so when you're on the inside That'll be like that. And even if uh, your hands are full, you can just give her the old elbow and out, like so. That'll work pretty good. The one thing on here I don't have yet to finish it all up is I am gonna put a spring uh, either from here, well, it's gotta stay on the door, I guess. From here down, it'd probably be easier if we put a spring in here and we mounted it from here up maybe if we could attach it to where that handle bolt comes through and that spring will hold it up this up which will hold that down and in the latched position and then we'll have to come up with uh, some sort of latch to keep it closed because a goat could figure that out whether it wanted to or not just on accident But we're making great progress, and I love it. I really do. 
That black and white, I think it's going to look sharp. Really sharp. Like I said, this gets gravel. It'll kind of be a parking area so we can get equipment or, well, vehicles down here for straw and feed and that kind of thing. The fenced in chicken run comes out that way. The goat run, the fence will run out into the field area down over the hill so they'll have a big field out front. Well, I'll, I'll show you. Goats will have this field up here. We'll fence all that off. And there's the barn there. Like I said, I really don't know when we're gonna get back to this. I'm pretty much out of all the material I need. I've gotta get the truck back together. This truck. I gotta get that transmission back up in that truck. That's it, it's a hectic day. I gotta get the tools picked up. I gotta get the kids and go get maybe some ice cream because it's just, it's an ice cream kind of day. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all your support. I appreciate you all subscribing. Um, yeah, okay. Welcome to the After Hours Edition. Kids are up there playing on the trampoline. I got them home from school, got to the auto parts store. I went ahead and uh, went ahead and clipped this off like I was talking about. Put some paint on it, trim this back a little bit. And like I said, I'll get some conveyor belts or something to screw in here to cover that gap and close it all in. But it does give us the uh, plenty of clearance. Gives us well above 90. That should work perfect. And I did go ahead and pick up a spring too. So that's all set the way it needs to be. Or from the inside. Stay. Then you're good to go. Beautiful. Now, I suppose I could have made this the outro, but I also know there's a lot of people that are going to say that doesn't work and they don't like the fact it doesn't open 180 degrees and it's going to be a mountain or a hill that they're just going to choose to die on. And some people have been waiting their whole life to be right about something and I'm just going to let them have their moment. But you guys know the loyal watchers in the after hour section, it's going to work just great. Do appreciate you all watching. And I'll see you guys on Sunday. I got the rest of the hydraulic hoses and everything set up. We're gonna get auxiliary hydraulics on the 755 and I cannot wait. I might go jump on a trampoline myself. See ya.